what's going on with Ian Connor and Moa Lola. So I'm sure most of you know um, these two individuals from afar. It feels like, what, a few days ago or maybe a week ago, um, all of a sudden it erupted on social media. I feel like on Twitter, especially on fashion Twitter, people talking about Moa Lola and Ian Connor dating. And I didn't know that was a thing. Um, but I think it kind of spurned from this particular show. Moa Lola did a show for her brand uh, for spring 2020 for spring 2025 in london um that looked really cool i don't think you can see the full collection anywhere i don't think so unfortunately i think I'm, there might be a youtube video actually i'll put on in a minute but i don't think it's available on vogue runway or anything but it looked pretty cool for me from the outside um nothing too crazy but you know it looked, looked pretty cool for what it was and i think because of that show and because some of the things that people didn't like from what they saw the show the conversation then shifted around oh Molola not being a very likable person because now she's dating this Ian Connor guy and I was like what that's really random isn't it like when did that fucking link up happen because I felt like before everybody was talking about this or before that was sort of like leaked I don't feel like I've ever seen them either interact on social media like I don't think I've ever seen Jeremy much it felt like they were purposely trying to keep their relationship off of social so it felt like all of a sudden we all kind of found out together like the internet I think if you were in this industry, you probably would have known. But I think the rest of the internet kind of found out at the same time. So clearly both people, it felt like, were aware that people would react negatively to the news or something. And um, yeah, it's become a topic of conversation, mainly because of Ian Connor's allegations of rape and shit. That's it, to be honest. Um, but also I think slightly because Mo Lola has become a little bit of a controversial figure on social media because she's, you know... She likes to fucking fire back at people and people to lend to, like, you know, she kind of feeds into it. They feed into it with her. It's a weird little thing that's going on there. I don't really see anything that wrong with it personally. I think some of her clapbacks are a little bit, you know, they leave a lot to be desired. But I also don't mind that she's kind of standing up for herself on social and kind of giving as good as she gets on social media instead of kind of crying and complaining about haters and trolls. Um, and she seems kind of, you know, what's I think was steadfast in what she does. Just from an outside point of view, just from an outside point of view, I find it really, 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 really interesting how somebody like Ian Connor is able to like bag for less of a, for lack of a better term, women of this type of caliber in general. Not to be offensive to the guy. Again, he seems like a cool dude. He does. He done some great stuff over the years. He's done a lot of like influential things in style and street style or whatever. And he's been involved in some really interesting movements and blah, blah, blah. But he legit looks like a gremlin. But he's been able to like, you think of Raven Girl. Um, you think of who else is it? Um, the girl from Love and Hip Hop. I forgot her name. This one. Like he's dated some, some like tens, you know, and he looks the way that he looks. It's pretty impressive, like pretty fucking impressive. So on that side of things, you have to give the guy a lot of props. You have to, you know, salute to the king, you know, salute, clap, 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 whatever it may be. I'm just curious, if you're Moa Lola, wouldn't you have anticipated some of this negative reaction? Cause I, feel that, I think that that was a lot of the annoyance with some people online when this news was kind of put about. I think some people, again, you, you don't owe anybody an explanation, I understand. But I'm interested to know, would she have anticipated the negative reaction she would have got once people found out that she was dating this guy? Because people believe him to be a rapist and shit and to be creepy and to be weird and stuff. Like, wouldn't she have had no, wouldn't she have been able to anticipate it or would she just completely naive to it? Because I feel like that was the most obvious reaction that would have happened if people find out that you're engaged to Ian Connor because of what people think about Ian Connor. And I think with her current situation, with people already not liking her personality online, it seemed like an interesting way to go down, you know, an interesting thing to go. Like people already don't like your personality and think you're a bit annoying on social. And they're like, all right, cool. You think I'm annoying? Watch this. This is my fiance. <laughs> Everybody just goes crazy. And in general, anyway, I've always wondered, maybe this whole thing about like, sexual assault harassment rape allegedly allegations when it comes to dudes maybe it's not that much of a big deal as much people will make it seem as because in media in entertainment in fashion in sports in fashion in music whatever i don't think i've ever seen uh somebody that's been accused of one of those things 
who hasn't been in a relationship or had kids or family and shit you'd think if a guy gets accused of like being a pedophile or gets accused of you know rape and stuff you'd think that would be like a super super big red flag for all women across the board to be like hey you have to run a mile this guy's got some crazy allegations in his jacket i can't even be around that sort of shit but it doesn't seem to be a real deal breaker you know it's a case by case thing so maybe the truth of it is most of us are just full of shit people like to say it's a problem online oh my god it's a big thing it's a big thing it's a big thing but is it really though because I've, i don't think i've ever seen there's not well i don't ever seen there's not many rapists sexual abusers sexual harassers or whatever who are single most of them have like families most of them have have like relationships long ones with other women so clearly those other women don't really care about the allegations or maybe they don't believe the allegations but then you'd think even if the allegations weren't true you'd think the allegation is so heavy and it's rare that you just get people just say stuff about you and it's not true you know where there's smoke there's fire you'd imagine obviously you know um allegations are still allegations you're innocent until proven guilty but I'd, you'd think for a woman surely if they if they found out that you did something to get to a child that that, that should be a complete deal breaker because they're like hey i can't risk being in a relationship with you because i don't know what you might do to our child you know what i mean or you know, what you might do to me but it seems like most women when it actually come when push comes to shove in the real world they don't actually care you know they don't actually actually care and this is proof of it because everybody says that this ian connor guy's a rapist he's not short of women he's not short of options he's not short of admirers so clearly some women don't care or don't believe the allegations and i've actually always wondered actually what these allegations were like so i'm gonna do this in fucking real time what are these fucking what's this let's do it ian connor oh look why hasn't me too come for ian connor jesus christ kanye west um Oh yeah, cool. So here, here it is. So let, let's let's do let's do this one. Let's do this one. Let's do let's do this business of fashion one. Let's copy that link address and let's go to archive. And let's do it because I want to see. I want to read this in real time because I've always wondered what are these? What are even these allegations? Everyone always says this guy's a rapist, but you never actually. I've never actually read what he actually has been accused of. Like, what is actually these? What are these allegations? Because maybe all of it is lies. I don't really fucking know. So let's see. This is an article from Business of Fashion from what? What year is this? 2019? 2019. Why is it Me Too come for Ian Connor? So this is Ian Connor when he was much younger. He's actually a lot chunkier than he is nowadays, isn't it? Actually, you know? Uh, I think COVID kicked all of our asses, to be completely honest. Where is it? I think it's there, right? Yeah, so he's, he's, he's a lot more uh, he's a lot more chunky than he, than he was back then, according to the picture right there he is there with more lola actually as you can see kershaw stay grounded and this is the article from 2019 so kershaw business of fashion it says um jean de or jean 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 do or that jean jean do jean do okay let's let's call it jean a chicago-based multi multi a chicago-based musical artist said that she met the model and stylist ian connor on instagram after exchanging some direct messages they switched to texting they met up briefly in Chicago and after she moved to New York, they ran to each other again at a concert in New Jersey. A week or so after that, Connor asked Dior um, if she wanted to meet um, in the New York Soho neighborhood to go shopping, but Connor did a show and after 20 or so minutes, Jean decided to leave. While on the train home, she received a distress call from Connor. He said he was running late because he'd been beaten up by an associate. <laughs> oh yeah i remember this was this during that fight was this during new york fashion week when he fought fucking bari he was beating up uh beating up by an associate of new york based hip-hop collective ace of mob while styling a shoot john said that she could hear he was upset and felt sorry for him so she agreed to come back it was getting late and connor said that he he had a place in manhattan where they could stay before heading to the shops in the morning oh ho, 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 ho. oh this is like textbook fucking creep behavior isn't it like always offering another always offering an excuse to go back to the crib it's like it's not even like a straight up come to mind it's like no let's go to mine then we're gonna go to the thing that you want to do it's like no 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 always run a mile that's a big 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 red flag 
it was getting late Connor said he had a place in Manhattan they could stay before heading to the shops Jean followed him to what looked like a cheap hotel which she later suspected was actually a brothel it was there that she claims that Connor raped her to date six women have publicly accused the silence of rape six Connor for the most part has denied the allegations made by June and um, which she first made public in Tumblr post in 2016 as well as allegations by the other women he did not respond to requests for comment prior to the article publication on Thursday Connor replied to BOF Instagram post with a series of emojis he did not immediately respond to the request for further comment Ian Connor um, in a post Harvey Weinstein world me too has become a global movement blah 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 but there have been similar backlash against Connor in fact um, since the rise of me too in 2017 the stylist and model has launched a new clothing brand starred in a magazine editorials the mirror magazine proclaimed him one of the coolest it boys in fashion and attended fashion shows sitting in front row at the Virgil Abloh's debut Louis Vuitton show nothing has happened just as of recently he's been more and more put in the media and pop culture he's kind of found his way back into the being socially accepted um, I really want people to start holding others accountable and holding themselves accountable so we can make progress in this industry as a culture it seems like recently though that's changed I feel like recently he's definitely maybe it's by choice but I feel like he's not as he's not as like visible as he was in the past Maybe because he's also fell out. Maybe it's also because he's, he's fallen out with a bunch of people. But I feel like he's not really about as much. Or maybe because of Virgil passing. I don't know. But I feel like he's not really around. You don't really see him at fashion weeks as often. Or if he's there, people don't take pictures of him. Maybe there's like a, there's like a fucking, um, you know, a, a ruling to like not take pictures of him and shit and avoid taking street style pictures of him. So maybe he does go to shows, but he just doesn't get papped. Um, he doesn't maybe get invited to all the big shows anymore or get photographed and behind the scenes um, I don't feel like he's I don't know I don't I, I remember before when I checked the Instagram from time to time he'd always be getting sent stuff from like cool designers he doesn't really get sent free shit anymore so things feel things feel like it's changing a little bit for him so maybe this is the consequences of it but again like nothing has really been you know there's no real concrete evidence so far from what he's actually done but allegedly six people have come forward and said something about him so article continues um muna mir a writer and associate producer on the television show Jesus and mirror put the question on the internet last week did he kind of face literally any consequences i feel like i see him in the background of virgil's instagram she tweeted connor was quick to respond if the consequences were more money more power and a clearer headspace then yes i face consequences <laughs> Oh, he comes across as such a cunt, in it. <laughs> He's such a cunt, but you know, if he really didn't do it, then I guess he, you know, hip hop in his shit makes sense. So Connor, twenty six at the time, said began his rise and Instagram. Okay, we don't care about his rise. Um, despite his five foot five inches stature, by the way, again, five foot five. So far, I think every girl that we've seen him linked with public has been taller than him, isn't it? So props to him, bro. Props to the short king for bagging all of these amazonian baddies he continues an unusual height for a male fashion model he enjoyed high profile modeling gigs for likes of babe asher anderson shangles and immediate students with his kanye's yeezys um allegations against connor first surfaced publicly in april 2016 yeah this is again so many allegations nothing has really stuck so far i wonder why maybe it's not true who knows um allegations since 2016 when Malika Anderson, 25, and a master student at Columbia University claimed in a blog post that she had been raped by Connor in October 2014 in, the, in Deca that Decatur, Georgia. So somebody alleged that he raped her in 2016. Yo, this guy has allegations against his name since the beginning, isn't it? Again, it doesn't seem to really affect his dating life because women still seem to like be into him clearly as we've seen with the fucking um moa lola post that i mentioned to it prior prior right him allegedly they're they're engaged now or maybe already married so again i say when women talk about all oh, you know sexual assault and rape and stuff being so bad and all this malarkey on the internet i wonder if this is just like social media talk I and mean, in the real world they don't actually care because if somebody's had allegations whether or not they're true or not you'd imagine if somebody has allegations against their name 
since 2016 you'd imagine most sensible women would be like you know what i don't know if it's true or not but i just don't want to deal with this this is just too much we don't even know each other and you already have allegations on your jacket from 2016 like i don't want to deal with this but he doesn't seem to have any trouble any trouble bagging the ladies so i don't know maybe it's not true maybe i don't know maybe they don't believe it maybe they don't care who knows it continues at the time she said that she decided to write the post when the police failed to bring charges against connor after she filed an official report the case was dropped she said due to lack of evidence although this is not and that's the thing about rape and all that stuff in it we all know that unfortunately those type of serious horrible crimes they're really hard to judge to fucking charge in court in it that's the thing they're really fucking hard like i think the conviction rate is like in single digits especially in the uk it's fucking really difficult for some reason um to really kind of prosecute somebody for those type of things so when people get away with it it really isn't like you know because they're innocent it's because sometimes there just isn't enough evidence to convict them for whatever reason so it continues um body by the really being Although this is not the ideal result of my choice to file a report against him, I do not regret my choice. The system isn't built for me, and that's something I wholeheartedly understand about America. However, I also believe that you never know what the outcome of anything will be unless you try. Jean, who was the early stages of her music career at the time of alleged rape, told her story in a Tumblr post in 2016. I wrote this for Malika, whose case could have been stronger if I was brave as she was when she came forward, she wrote at the time. Connor denied the allegations, tweeting, I, Ian Connor, I am not a rapist, nor do I condone rape in any shape or form. I don't respect liars, nor force situations. Please be real. Connor has since deleted the tweet. In June 16, um, Kadita Diallo told the Daily Mail in the video interview how she was raped by Connor when she was 16 and still a year. Yeah. I don't know, bro. I don't know what to make of this whole shit. Regular dudes don't just have like random people in their lives who say they raped them. I don't know. And he he's not that famous, you know? Yes, he's famous, but I don't think he's that famous of a person that you would think he'd get targeted by randoms to make up for Yeah, you know I mean, I, I don't know. There, there might be a mixture of it. I don't know because America sometimes could be weird with fame and shit and people making up things to you know want to be spoken about and seen and shit but somebody who's like a niche you know celebrity or known person having this amount of allegations against their name seems a little bit dicey a little bit dicey for me um let's go back to this again in, 20, in, in June 2016 Kaditia Diallo told the daily mail in a video interview how she was raped by connor when she was 16 and still a virgin three more alleged victims spoke up in a newspaper over the next few days Jeannie stampley um taryn williams and somebody called Alyssa, who requested to remain anonymous connor denied the allegations too so that's what daily mail people that's one two three four five people spoke to daily mail in june 2016 god almighty like anderson stampley said that she filed a police report against connor in will county illinois but it did not result in charges about nine months after i filed it they called me and said that they were sending it to canada where the assault occurred i never got another phone call after that god almighty today connor has denied all allegations of rape and other sexual misconducts against him in july 2016 the interview he told broadly i'm being accused of rape and i would never rape anybody I do not condone rape. I've never raped anybody. Why force somebody to do something they don't want to do? Any force situation? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. When you, you you just stop there. You don't say this. If you didn't do it, just stop there. I'm being accused of rape, and I would never rape anybody. Just say I did not rape anybody. You don't say why why force them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say that sort of shit that makes you look a bit guilty you just stop at the beginning anyway uh bins of Asher managed to reach three of the six women who publicly accused connor of raping them they each reaffirmed the allegations the accusations have received intimate sorry intermittent attention on from the media and fashion community over the last few years including a blog post by the fashion law which laid out the women's claims and lack of repercussions in detail in february 2018 even as the rape allegations began to pile up connor's stature continued to grow and in some of the most influential circles in music and fashion industry now to offer a counter of this to offer a counter to this there is a bunch of people in fashion at the moment who have gotten away with it 
that Ludovic de Saint, whatever his name is, he allegedly is a bit of a creep. Um, Alexander Wang, that was documented, and he, I think that was actually legit. That's not alleged. He was fucking spiking um, guys' drinks with ketamine or MDMA or something, and then taking advantage of them sexually. And a lot of these guys came out and basically aired him out. I think it was part of an article. Eventually, I think he settled with some of the guys. But now Alexander Wang is like, he's got all the big models at his shows. People are going to his runway shows. His brand never died. People are still buying this stuff. They're promoting it on Vogue and shit. Um, Photographers, I can think, I forgot the the guy's name, but the creepy one for Vice, he's still around. Like, there's a bunch of people who've got allegations on their jacket who are still around. So it's a bit rich sometimes for people to like pick and choose which people they want to cancel legit because there's a bunch of people now who are still operating in fashion who probably shouldn't right because they've done some very heinous horrible downright evil shit and they've kind of got away with it because of their stature because of the money they generate because of who they work for who they work under what house they work all this malarkey so maybe this sort of thing is hard because if you're not going to cancel those people, you know, how do you expect to cancel this guy? It's just difficult. Like, and I think this is not really a cancellation thing. This is, this is like, there has to be charges, you know, this, the only way this is going to change is if somebody actually gets charged. I don't think you can cancel anybody on the back of an allegation. I don't, I don't think it should, I don't think it should really work like that. But then I think the, the seriousness of the crimes that are being alleged, it should keep people pause. Like, Oh, hold on. But, fashion is fashion probably feels a lot more like sport i feel like fashion, in, in sport is the same thing professional sports unless you get put in prison people are going to continue working with you like legitimately unless you actually get handcuffed and taken to prison people are continually going to work with you so i feel like the same thing happens in fashion fashion people are going to turn a blind eye they're going to pretend nothing's going on they're going to keep looking at the up at the wall looking up at the floor you know twiddling their thumbs but the moment you get put into prison, everyone's going to like pretend like, oh my God, you're so horrible. But they're only going to make that decision, um, you know, when the obviously the police or the authorities kind of get involved. So I don't know. It continues. But it's also a bit weird. That whole crew in it, ASAP Bari has some weird allegations against him. Like that whole ASAP mob is like, it's full of fucking creeps, bro. <laughs> like It's full of wrongings, full of fucking wrongings. I think Bari was legitimately on the sex offender register, wasn't he? I swear he was. Barry was on like the sex offenders register. Like, legit. Like, that whole crew is full of some wrongings. Um, that's my little brother. What the world gotta say, you gotta feel what I'm saying. He's a young visionary. ASAP Rocky told Rape Radar podcast. Wow. Uh, but to be fair, Rocky doesn't really hang around with, but with, with Ian Connor that much. I don't feel like I've seen Ian Connor in the presence of Rocky ever since he's been with, with Rihanna. Maybe I think Rihanna's been like, hey, we can't have this guy around, you know. My, I'm a fucking billionaire. Like, we can't have this guy around. So I don't think I've, I don't think I've seen a picture of. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaken, but I really don't think I've seen a picture of Ian Connor hanging around with ASAP Rocky ever since, um, you know, he's got a relationship with her. So maybe that says everything we need to know about what he thinks about him now. Um, Rocky noted that Connor had never been arrested nor charged in connection with these allegations, adding that he preferred to not discuss the issue because it's a touchy situation that I'd rather not talk about. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Again, I'm the wrong person to ask about this sort of stuff or to respond or to talk about this shit because I don't really have a big social group of friends. But if I did have one, I think in a group of friends, especially guys, if somebody has allegations of, on their name about rape and shit or kitty diddling, you have to get that cleared up. And, and you until then, you can't hang around with me anymore. I can't be your friend. Like, honestly. Like, I really can't. Like, that sort of stuff doesn't happen to, like, randomly, oh, just someone just accused me out. Uh, you have to get that shit cleared up. You can't be around me if you got that shit on your jacket. Really can't be around me. So I'm, I'm not going to be the one standing around saying, oh, these are just allegations. He's never been charged. No, 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 no. He has to deal with it. I don't have to answer for his crimes. He has to answer for them. Alleged crimes. Um, also, June 17th, sorry, also in January 2017, Noah Stutz, a friend of Connor's, registered Revenge X Storm in California, marking the model and Muse's official foray into design with sneakers on its own. Stutz did not respond to the request for comment 
Connor's Vans inspired line of sneakers gained a lot of buzz on social media with Kylie Jenner and Abloh being among the one promoted design on their personal accounts. Today the $200 sneakers are sold at labels e-commerce sites as well as the consignment stores and stockets and grail. Is that even still around? I haven't seen a pair of Revenge and Storm shoes in ages. Do they even still sell them? Or does he even own them? I don't know if he still owns them. Okay, you can still purchase them. They're available in Yorks. In between eighty to one hundred and forty dollars, they're available. They still got their own website. Who owns it at the moment, though? Hmm. They're still available to purchase, but yeah, these were those were one of his big money earners back in the day. Now I think he's he sold quite. He sold a few of these fucking shoes. I remember he sold a few of these fucking shoes, like a lot, a lot of these shoes. Hey, yo, big up, big up, Ashley in the chat. What I want to Ashley? What I want? What I want? Anti Ashley. What's good, Auntie Ashley? Um, big up the chat. Uh, what are you guys saying now? Uh, big up. Um, yeah, random shows on the other channel. Just click home on my YouTube channel. You see the random show channel there. Um, if I've got time, I might do one after. If not, I'll do one in the morning when I wake up. So random show will be coming either after this or when I wake up in the morning. So not too long. Um, but check my main. Go click click my channel. Click home, and you'll see the the what you call it the random show channel link there. Or just do um. Just do a uh, maybe I'll put the link in the chat in a bit. But give me a second. Um, big up the stream chat here. Uh, big up this person called Alain, right? Alain, Alain. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your surname. I think it's Nayo Gushima. You say, to be fair, Moloa isn't a regular woman with regular consequences. She and him don't live in the same world we do. Regular people is open to more scrutiny than someone who can hide behind money. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point, but I still don't think it kind of explains the choice. You know, like I understand the scrutiny is not the same, but still the choice to like date somebody with those type of alleg like would she have dated someone like that with those type of allegations on their jacket if they weren't quote unquote famous or had money and shit? I don't know. You know, that's what I'm wondering. But I'm just also wondering. I think in general, it seems like. I don't know, like, every time you see somebody get charged for, like, a rape or something, especially if it's a dude, how often have you seen them go to court alone? They're usually always holding the hand of some woman, whether it's a wife or a girlfriend. So it's like, how does that happen? That's what I'm wondering. This person's got these allegations. They, they've known to have them, especially, of like, let's say a footballer or something, right? And then... You know, they've known to, they've, they've had this allegation, they're being charged, they're going to court, and then they appear at court with that, this wife that, you know, is pregnant at the moment, even though they, their husband or their fiancé has these allegations. It's like, I don't know, I, you just would have thought, if you're a woman, a rape allegation would be the would be like a scarlet letter, would be like a red herring, would be like a, a big alarm bell for you to, like, go running. But it seems like it doesn't really, it doesn't seem to put, it doesn't seem to put a pause on people's decision as much as it does online. I think people online cap a lot. That's probably what I'm getting at. I think online people cap. I think online people make it seem like they have morals and principles and, you know, this is my line in the sand. If I've dated somebody and I find out they're alleged of this, I won't date them. But in reality, that's not the truth. In reality, people do things very differently as we've seen with them, you know, this sort of issue. Um, but I don't know. 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 Um, big up Chris Mack I fly to Vegas Wednesday morning it's 2pm London time you gonna be doing any shows yeah 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 yeah. Um, random show should be in the morning so I'll, I'll, I'll probably do a really long one anyway so whenever I wake up it'll probably, I'll probably start one at about 11am my time tomorrow is it Wednesday tomorrow? Or tomorrow yeah Wednesday no no tomorrow's Tuesday no tomorrow's Tuesday so later I'll do I'll do one to later I'll do one later I'll do one later I'll do one later I'll do one later and probably I'll have one Wednesday as well actually because of the TFAT case happening as well so around then I think that's what you're asking right I think that's what you're asking um over the past year Connor has launched a second streetwear label dubbed Sicko Born From Pain during the last season of Paris Fashion Week menswear shows he scored a coveted front row seat at Abloh's high anticipated Louis Vuitton debut you spotted backstage the off-white show and sitting front row at the Matthew Williams 1017 Alix 9SM. He was among the insta famous personalities West cast in his Yeezy campaign led by Rick Richard Kern, which hit social media in August 2018. But we know why Yeezy done it, because Kanye doesn't believe in cancer culture, so that's, that's, you know, whatever. Um, 
with the exception of the rapper Philippus London, who called Connor a dirty fucking rapist on Twitter following a fist fight in the now closed Parisian concept store Colette. None of Connor's high profile associates have made public attempts to distance himself from the stylist following the rape allegations. Ablo declined to comment on from the, for the story. While he has not publicly spoken on the allegations against Connor following the fight at Colette, he told Women's Wear Daily, they're all brothers, so he's basically watching a bunch of brothers fight. It was totally fine. I looked at it like a casualty. I call it being a camp counsellor. I believe you can just... I, I believe you can't just like kids when it's good. I'm not an educator or anything like that. And it's not about that. It's just about leading by example. <laughs> Virgil was really good at that, bro. Just saying a bunch of stuff without saying anything. R.I.P. Virgil, man. Long live the goat. <laughs> he just waffled there and said absolutely nothing, but said a lot of words. Big up, Virgil. Representative of West declined to comment. Um, representative of Louis Vuitton at least did not respond to comment often in industry power dynamics disadvantage young individuals at the early stages of their career who feared speaking out about abuse will hold them back professionally this was one of the reasons why Jean who at the time was in the early stages of her music career decided not to file the police report against Connor my entertainment lawyer at the time told me literally maybe a couple of weeks ago a couple of days ago sorry about what happened and what if I wanted a fresh start in the music industry that I didn't want to bring attention to that I kind of, it kind of helped me make the decision not to pursue charges. Evermore was a reason not to go to the news and put my face a situation. Oh shit. So this girl's basically saying that she was advised like, hey, if you want a career in the industry, don't go with this because this is going to harm your ability to kind of make a... Yeah, music industry is dark, man. Music industry is fucking dark, isn't it? absolute the darkest you generally feel like you got raped you want to expose your fucking rapist you want to make sure they get punished but then for the sake of your career you have to really think twice because it actually could harm it I don't envy that situation whatsoever bloody hell blessings and prayers to those people beyond the allegation against Connor a lack of legal action is not uncommon when it comes to rape cases. Often the more time that has passed since the incident, um, the harder it is for the gather the evidence or specific details of the case. In some states, statute of limitation it also puts a clock on how long an individual has to file a criminal report. Bringing a civil case can be costly. Yeah, I think we saw it happen in the UK. This one lady, which is really tragic actually, because it seemed like what she said was actually believable because she had a lot of fucking evidence of prior communication she accused one footballer i think it might have been thomas Partey or something i think she accused a footballer of rape and she legitimately couldn't file charges because she missed it by like a couple of days or something you know she missed the window of being able to file a charge and the guy quote quote got away with it so that's true conviction rates are super low and then just a way to like charge and file for these sort of things is just all over the place so you know monsters can kind of really get away with real murder um police determine whether to pursue a criminal case for rape allegations based on the amount of evidence they can gather said sunu candy sunu chandy sorry legal director of the national women's law center one of the organizations behind the times up legal defense fund which works with individuals with civil sexual misconduct cases against employers whether somebody is telling the truth about sexual harassment or rape and whether there is enough evidence for the government to take it a case are two different questions ah whether someone's saying the truth about the sexual harassment and rape and whether the enough evidence are two completely different things <sighs> one's about proof and the evidence and what will the court decide and the other is about what really happened to somebody <sighs> So I guess if they feel like they can't get a conviction and there's not enough evidence, they just won't pursue it. Even though it probably happened. <sighs> like Anderson, Stanley filed a police... This is depressing. Um, Sorry about this. <laughs> Stanley filed a police report but told BOF that she regrets her decision. Jesus Christ. Um, I was encouraged by people I talked to that it would be a... Sorry, I was encouraged by people... I talked to that it would be good to have something on record saying that I had at least tried, but it was pretty much pointless. I shouldn't have done it because it wasn't like it did anything and it was just too much. It was just too much for having me to recount everything. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine going through the pain, 
and the stress and the emotional, physical, mental turmoil of recounting such events in extenuating detail as what police would like to do and having people question you and maybe feel like you're lying and shit. In addition to being young, all of Connor's alleged victims that came forward publicly were black. There were specific challenges facing African-American women in alleging sexual abuse. Evidence suggests that historically, being young, black and working class and a female significantly contributes to some allegations of assault and sexual abuse by victims being dismissed by authorities and the wider society. In the final episode of Lifetime documentary series, Cyrus Ida Kelly, detailing sexual abuse allegations against R&B singer Chance the Rapper, a Grammy Award winning black rapper, reflected, I didn't value the accusers stories because they were black women what he said that in the documentary no way hold on let me reread this chance rapper said this in a documentary with his full chest in the final episode of lifetime documentary series surviving r kelly detailing sexual abuse allegations against the r&b singer chance the rapper a grammy award-winning black rapper reflected i didn't value the accusers stories because they were black women <laughs> what the f why did he say that why wouldn't you believe their stories because they were black what because you thought they were groupies or something yo chance a rapper bro that's the kind of quote that you don't want someone to remind you of later down the line i didn't value the accuser's stories because they were black chance rappers a wild boy chance also said that he regrets working with a car kelly okay regretting working with somebody cool but not believing the accusers just because they were black surely he's just why it would have been better if he said i just didn't believe them because i just didn't believe them because the stories didn't sound believable instead of just saying i didn't believe them off rip because they were black women <laughs> that's an insane thing to say yo chance the rapper bro god damn um studies show that black women are often stereotyped in the media as hypersexual gold diggers and baby mothers while black girls are viewed as more sexually mature than their white peers this is a long history in america of black women being perceived as unrapeable unra said moya bailey a self uh, an american um african-american feminist scholar writer and activist this perception is still prevalent today so they're basically trying to say that across the board rapes and sexual harassment cases are hard to get convictions off of for them, right but then probably when you dig deep a little bit and then you start to focus on black women who have been sexually harassed or raped the numbers are probably scary because there's this what idea that black women are asking for it or something huh unrapeable what the fuck does that even mean so if a black woman a black woman's account of rape it's far has holds far less weight than a white woman's account of rape. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in this world, man. Fucking hell. Um, black women are also disproportionately affected by the gender-based violence, according to the web platform Black Women Two. More than four in ten black women experience violence from an intimate partner in their lifetime. Yet authorities are less likely to make an arrest on behalf of a black female victim. Police are more likely to arrest a black woman on the scene of a alleged incident following a report. Yeah, that's standard, though, isn't it? I think that's across the board. Black people have always we've always seen that happen. Unfortunately, like there was one situation here in the UK that fucking broke my heart. Somewhere in north, somewhere in outside of London this like smaller black dude was fending was fighting off all of these fucking neo-nazis and white supremacists that were trying to attack him when all the fucking stupid mundeles here were trying to fight us blacks and shit for taking their jobs and you don't know stupid riot that happened previously before the football season started now suddenly the football's on and no one's rioting but this black guy was trying to fight off all these guys and obviously they overwhelmed him inside rushing him on the floor and shit and he's really small trying to push him all the way and he's clearly getting beaten up by these crazy fucking thugs and then when the police come even though he's clearly the one that looks like he's been fucked up they first go to restrain him and he's small he must be like five foot three and all the other white guys are just they just disperse and run away and it's like that's classic that happens all the time if ever there's a skirmish and it involves some blacks and some whites and whatever the first person that ever gets like restrained or held even if they're the ones that the victims are the black people it happens all the time it's so fucking honestly it broke my heart when i saw that video man the guy's eye was literally swollen shut and shit he was bleeding all over but him he was the one that the police kind of jumped on it's like bruh like he obviously received a beating can't, can't you go to people that beat him up 
anyway, um, there is an there is an intersectionality between the criminal justice system, violence, police violence against black women, domestic and intra communal violence, poverty. So what what is, what does that mean? Intra communal violence. What the fuck does intra communal violence mean? I've never heard that phrase before. Intra communal violence. Uh, boom boom boom. What does that mean? Search Google. What does intra communal violence mean? Intra-communal violence is a type of communal conflict that occurs when people with similar culture and family identities within a community engage in violence. It's one of the two types of communal conflict and the other being inter-communal conflict. What? These terms, man, just make up terms just to sound smart. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Inter-communal violence? Huh? Anyway, um... As all these things collect into one issue, which is what our society does not value, respect or believe in black women, communications coordinator at the Blueprint, a civil and human rights organization that seeks to empower women of African descent. So it's just incredibly daunting for black women to just find justice through the criminal justice system. But there's also a long history of black men in the United States being falsely accused of rape. That idea of black male rapists is something that black communities are very vigilant about fighting. So there's a lot of this disbelief and defensiveness when it comes to black men who are accused of sexual violence. Ah, okay, now we're getting to the crux of it. Number one, um, conviction rates in rape and sexual, sex, sex, ha sexual harassment cases is super fucking low anyway, too low. Then within, when you kind of, you know, scratch down at the surface a bit, when it comes to black women, it's also very, very scary and low numbers. And then there's also a feeling within the black community that black men sometimes get accused of rape falsely too often. So people are sensitive to when somebody gets accused of rape to be like, hey, where's the evidence? Where's the charges? So yeah, that might explain a little bit of the situation we're already in, Connor. And no snitch code has developed within the black communities dating back to the days of slavery to protect black slaves from being abused or even murdered by their masters for perceived wrongdoing, said Camilla Johnson, founding executive or director of the Sasha Center, Detroit-based sexual assault service education agency. You keep the problems in house no matter what because you don't want to lose that family member because we didn't... Um, we, d we don't own dominion over our bodies and our placement in the world is in safe people said johnson it worked for us for a long time but what happened in this generation for a generation these same rules kept getting passed down without explanation entrenched racism in the american criminal justice system only complicates matters further johnson said that she has worked with a number of black female victims who are reluctant to go to the police for this reason it's guilt and shame and embarrassment and fear of not being believed they don't trust the police system, they don't want to be a snitch, and they don't want to get that family member or community member in trouble. In the internet age, sexual assault victims who are vocal about their experiences may also face bullying from social media. Indeed, after going public with their stories, several of Connor's alleged victims were subjects to cyber. Yeah, that's true. I remember that being a thing though. I was there when it happened. I remember a lot of those victims are getting fucking... <sighs> A lot of those alleged victims, sorry, were getting a lot of abuse online. I remember that, actually. That was very true. Um, this is not the tension I want. It's why I don't speak on the situation, said Jean. Um, I really want people to stop focusing on the attention that they think the victim wants and put the pressure on the people that are being accused. <sighs> I don't know, man. What do you guys think, man? What do you guys think? 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 Is Ian Connor a rapist or not? I don't know what to make of it, bro. I can't I can't judge whether or not he raped the people based on his celebrity friends not saying anything. Because fashion industry is like godless, right? A completely godless, principleless, lacking in morals, integrity, spine, um, anything, right? There's like there's loyalty zero. Like you can't base whether or not he's guilty or not on his celebrity friends. But I don't know. For me, there's just too many allegations, man. Too many. And back when he was like popping, popping, I could envision, again, not putting anything on people's jacket, but back when he was popping, popping, I could maybe see a scenario where lines were blurred. Especially when he was like on fire. Like the, you know, all over the blogs, all over the mood boards at every show, getting all the free stuff, Yeezys, 
um, whatever the shoes, the the clothes, the fashion. I I could see those lines being blurred, but I just I just don't think regular guys who don't I, I don't know maybe I'm I'm being naive, maybe this is common, but I just don't think regular dudes just have like twenty plus allegations on their jacket like that. Like what? Why would you just have twenty plus allegations of rape? It's not even like he's got 20 plus allegations of like being a sex pest. That's something, that's different, right? Oh, this guy is always in my DMs. He's always trying to holler. That's different. Okay, maybe a lot of us guys could probably fall under that banner, especially if you're being too horny and shit. But I don't think it's common for like regular dudes to just have like rape allegations on them, sexual harassment allegations on them, like in the double digits. I don't know, bros. What are you guys saying? Um, so big up, um, big up, Alan. Um, what's the thing? Uh, what, no, big up. Uh, yeah, um, I don't blame them either. Okay, cool. What's that? You said I don't blame them either, but I also wouldn't feel bad for. I I don't blame them either, but I also wouldn't feel bad for looking at them sideways and not associating with them. We all have the power to make decisions, and you make one. You know, no, for sure, for sure. Um, it's not that I blame them. I just. I guess like I'm saying, I just, in my naive, simplistic male brain, I just assumed if you're a woman and you heard of a guy and you heard that the guy that you were about to date beat kids, imagine, right? He's been a, he's a child abuser. You would imagine if you're a woman, that would be an instant red flag. That would instantly turn your pussy dry. Instantly. You could never, ever be interested in that guy again because, oh my God, what, he hit kids? Like, you'd run. Oh my god, he's he's got domestic domestic violence charges. Oh shit, I'll run. But what I'm seeing a lot is that I feel like people on the internet say one thing, but in society you see a bunch of abusers, creeps, rapists and shit, always in relationships, always married with other women. So clearly people kind of like talk out both sides of their mouths, or they're just full of shit. I don't know. Because I would have thought if I was again trying to put myself in a woman's shoes, I would have thought that would be a that would be like a a no no. Like I could never date somebody that you know touches kids, beats kids, has hit women. Like you know the type of things that women say. But oh, I wouldn't date a guy who isn't nice the way he is. I'm not gonna date a guy who doesn't have a good relationship with their mom. It's like, bro, like why are you dating a guy that's got like rape allegations? <laughs> it's like why of all the men in the world, like why that one of rape allegations? You know. Or maybe you just don't believe them. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, big up Chris Chris Mack. Uh big up Muhammad big up Muhammad, um, who says here, bro, when you for, um bro, who can forget the video of Bari straight after wireless twenty seventeen? Like the girl was crying, they were recording her trying to force shit, had to stop wearing Oh my god, brother. It was after wireless, isn't it? You're right. You know what made it fucking wild? You know what made it fucking wild? If I'm not mistaken, She's in a room with that guy. Um, why do I know this? Because I, I was really fucking into those guys back in the day. Follow them on social media. But if I remember, the girl, I think it was a white girl. She was in the room with the other guy that's associated with those guys. I think he's also a stylist called, like, I think his Instagram name is like Prince Green or Green Prince or something. And that makes it even more worse because it seems like she was in there consensually with this guy. And then Bari comes in there like, yeah, I want some too or some I want some two type of vibe that's what made it extra dark like she's in there consensually with this one dude having her fun and then Bari comes in with a camera recording I think he even had a flash or something if you remember I think because the blinds of the hotel room are closed and then he just comes in and lifts off the fucking covers his boy like even his boys under there it's like what are you doing and like you said she's crying she's screaming and, he, and I think he's like what do you, what do you say he says, he says some like really dark chilling line like Ah, I want some too. Give it up to me or something as well. He said something really fucking dark. I forgot what it was. Like, and he was, it felt like he was almost like chasing around the room. I remember that video when it went viral. Like, oh my god! And I think that's what that obviously killed Vlon because obviously at that point I think that's when he done his show at Paris, um, fashion show. He had that collaboration with Nike that got shelved. That kind of like killed the brand like globally. It was, I think it was about to take over and be a really big thing, but that really kind of damaged the brand and it hasn't been able to recover since then. Now it's kind of gone back to being a little bit of a, you know, I won't say underground brand, but 
um it's definitely not as big as it once was probably why he's doing this other stuff now he does um endless and shit we're trying to change you know names and whatever do something new but the name of loans has been stained ever since that and i think legit i honestly do think he got put in the sex the sex offenders list i think so but i could be wrong um yeah exactly big man destroyed his, his own work with that exactly exactly more than one uh smoke there exactly exactly jordan ray too many allegations for people who have nothing to gain exactly younger vibes it's too graphic to be aligned with the kind of lifestyle you portrayed some of them i think are a bit optimistic but the fact that more than one aligns with your character exactly yeah. i don't know again i don't know i don't know man nasty work exactly that's it nasty work that's that's the jordan ray nasty work Let's see some of the comments. What are people saying here on the on the Instagram page? Cause you stay grounded. Um, and big up as well, um, my nigga Luis Luis Pisano. He's the one that kind of blew this whole thing up. By the way, Luis Pisano was going um, um, back back and forth with Mo Lola and I think Ian Connor online and um, throwing some actual interesting bars and jibes at them and shit. That was kind of funny. Actually, I think I might have it up here. Actually, where is his where is his account? I think I might have his account here. I think he said something quite snarky to Ian Connor and shit. And I think that's what started everything. I'm think sure I started. Yeah, I think that's what started everything. So yeah, this is Luis Pizano's Instagram account. He says totally normal response to somebody asking why you're working with somebody with forty plus rape allegations. Marilena responds to him and says, "Why are you always on my dick, sister? Like always." She says, uh, "If wondering why you keep." Um, one of the most prolific industry rapists around you is being on your dick. Call me Karen Steffens. <laughs> Good reply back. And then he received obviously this DM that said um, uh, they're engaged. Wait, I thought it was common knowledge. Let me shut the fuck up. And then he also says, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. What else come here? I think he said something else. Um, what happened here? Then he replies back. Good journalism. Ian Connor replies back to Luis Pizano. Uh, good journalism. Belt steel. Sooner later than sooner rather than later. So was that sooner than later after than that? Five foot four trying to threaten me, LOVO. So to be fair, we've seen Ian Connor fight. We've seen him fight and you know the guy hasn't got any squabbles unfortunately. Maybe it's his size, but I think he might have lost a couple. Actually no. He might have won that fight. Didn't he win that fight? I think it was that complex. I think he kinda won I think it was that fight complex that he did. He he stood too, he, he stood pretty tall on. But I think the one that we saw him fight, um Fearful's London, he got the better of him. I think there was the one with I think Bari hit him as well. I think he got better of him. I think he also had a fight with um what's his face? Kerwin in that house one time, right? That was with Playboy Kai. I think he got ran cycled. Uh yeah. Another one here says Dick Dick they're calling him Dick Depper. <laughs> okay. Worry less about what I'm doing with Dick and more about where your man is sticking his non consensually. Eesh. Eesh. Another one says Ian Connor goes to Luis Pizano. Y'all, y'all are cyberbullying heavy on the internet. Walk past y'all in real life with my young niggas close by, and y'all look down. I see it in y'all's faces. I feel the energy when I walk in the room. And Luis Pizano says, "Of course we look down when you walk past. What else are we supposed to do when you're five foot four, nigga?" <laughs> that's actually good. I should have. I should have. Okay. Uh, that's a really good clap back. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> what else are we meant to do when you're 544 oh my god what an absolute mess man what an absolute mess let's go back to the post let's see what people are saying um what are the responses how the hell he be getting all these fine joints exactly that's what i'm wondering like you know again guy looks like a gremlin and Again, no offense. We, we you know we're all born with the faces we're born with. It is what it is. Not all of us are born with amazing good looks and shit. But he looks like the way he does. He's five foot something because he's he looks short in pictures. So imagine how short he must be in real life. And the rape allegations, like he's got so many things against him, but he still fucking perseveres and shines. So he should be proof to all you incels out there who think you can't get any girls. It's all in the mind, man. It's all in your mind. <laughs> I'm sure this will go well. Good things, uh, good thi good things. He's an outstanding fella. Uh, in Mao, we trust. Uh, that's funny that he will do. He climbing that tree. Good for them. Inshallah. Heartbreak. Corrupt. What's that? Corrupted truth. I don't know. No one seems to give a shit. I don't know what's going on. Who knows what's going on? I bet. I guess God bless them in some regard. If it works for them and they're in love and shit, fair play. Um, the Mo Lola situation with her being kind of a bit of a, you know, 
having getting spats online and shit it's interesting strategy but i guess it kind of works with the brand and the image you're trying to cultivate and i, I don't know i, I kind of don't mind the back and forth and the kind of you know back and forth she's having people online i kind of don't mind her being a little bit spicy and shit with all that sort of stuff but i just find it wild that you know you would openly date somebody like those type of allegations but again maybe she knows something we don't maybe he's not maybe he's not guilty of the of the, of the crimes he's being accused of Maybe it's all just um, a big takedown attempt because he's a, such a good person. Who knows? Who fucking knows? So big up them two. Big up them two. I guess we have to wait and see how this all pans out.